Hi, I'm Anthony Marinelli. Today I'd like to show you how to make the hidden machine gun sound in Beat It by Michael Jackson. It's a sound that enters in the middle of the song just before Eddie Van Halen's guitar solo. You may not notice it unless you listen very carefully for it. And then you'll find that it performs an important function by interjecting a faster rhythm into the song just before Eddie steps up to blast his iconic Beat It solo. I made this sound on my ARP 2600 using a technique that I employed on the score to the movie Blue Thunder a few years before. So let's break it down right now. So that's the sound that I called machine gun. And I used it on the song Beat It by Michael Jackson because at that part of the song, it made sense to me to kind of stir things up. And I was kind of in a mode from doing a lot of like sequencer types of things on films. So I just proposed it to the room. It wasn't necessarily a sound that was on any of the demos that, that, that I knew of. But this, this stemmed from my experiences. And I want you to know, like when I, I first showed up for these um, thriller sessions, the first thing that I ever heard was the song Beat It as I was walking down the hall. And I was told that Michael was in one of the rooms banging on drum cases. That's how it was, it was pitched to me. And so to go into Studio B and set up there, because Michael was in Studio A with, with all these cases. And we've, we've run some videos on how he came up with this idea from a screwdriver falling off the shelf and hitting a drum case. So he was in there kind of recreating those sounds to, to make the, um, the double for the snare on beat four of the, that runs through the song. So this was kind of going on while I was setting up. I was ready for, like, for action. I knew that there was going to be a lot of creativity and um, a lot of good energy going on because that's what I felt when I came in. So I'd like to break this sound down for you. It takes two things to make it work, a Dr. Click and, and this ARP 2600. So by using the Dr. Click, I could create a click from one of the drum sounds and then drive the ARP 2600 so that the envelope generators will fire in sync with the track. And that's what I did. And you can see this light flashing 16th notes. It could be flashing eighth notes or quarter notes, which is the actual click of the song. So when it's flashing 16th notes, it's sending 16th note gates to the envelope generators. And that's illustrated in this cable right here that's coming from the Dr. Click. I'm molting it, so that means I'm making two of them. One of them is going to this trigger input, so it'll fire both of these envelope generators. So now I'm firing the envelope generators like in time with the track. So that's pretty straightforward. The other molted signal, that's a 16th note gate coming from this Dr. Click, is going to the external input of the sample and hold generator. And I'll explain why. I want the sample and hold generator to put out random voltages, but in time with the track. So I can't just rely on the sample and hold generator's clock, because that's not having anything to do with the song. So by patching the, the 16th note gates coming from the Dr. Click into the sample and hold generator external clock input, now the sample and hold generator is in time. So then the set, let's go back to the construction of the actual audio part of the sound. Let me let you hear it. And I'll stop the doctor click. So now I just have a tone. And I want you to be able to realize that there's two oscillators in this sound. Oscillator two is a pulse wave, kind of thin. You can see the duty cycle. It's way less than 50%. And I'm modulating it with a low frequency sine wave from this ARP keyboard. So it's moving at a kind of a medium rate and let's just solo that so you can hear it. I'll speed it up. So that's the speed of the pulse width modulation and then oscillator three is an octave above and it's a sawtooth and it's not being modulated in any way. And you put them together and you get two oscillators in unison. There's a lot of grind going on. So, and so now you can hear the sample and hold generator is in time. I'm sampling pink noise, not white noise, 
which simply means by sampling pink noise, it's not going to be as crazy random. There's less range of frequencies for um, the voltages. And then I'm modulating the filter. And then I'm also modulating the filter with the ADSR envelope generator. And let's hear that. So that's gonna, this slider is going to control the brightness of the ADSR envelope generator. This slider is going to control the initial filter frequency. And then this slider is going to control the amount of sample and hold random voltage to the filter. And then this whole combination of sound from the oscillators to the filter is going to go into a VCA, which is a voltage controlled amplifier, and I just shut it down. This is the initial gain on the VCA. So that means nothing's going to pass unless it's being fired by an envelope generator. So I take this same ADSR envelope generator that's, you can see it's modulating the filter, now it's modulating the VCA. So that, so that means when it's firing, you can hear it. If I didn't have it modulating the VCA, you wouldn't be able to hear the sound. And if I didn't go into the VCA, the sound would just kind of leak because the filter is kind of open. So I need something to sort of quiet things down in the room, but only fire at the rate of the envelope generator. And then it's a matter of, there's a little bit of resonance, and you can set it to taste. It's a little more papery. A little resonance. This is going to control the amount of random. It's the sample and hold input to the filter, and then ADSR input to the VCF is going to control the brightness of the attack of the sound. So, somewhere in here, just the right amount of random. And let's roll track again. Please remember to like and subscribe. It means a lot to us. It energizes us. We read your comments um, and we appreciate all of you. So uh, something that's interesting that happens a lot on the Thriller album is Bruce Sweetine, who's the engineer, would, according to how he thought, you know, he would be able to clear for certain new sounds coming in, he would mute things. So this sound rolled all the way through probably to the end, but he only used it in the intro section to the guitar solo. So it's right after that main lick da 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 stops and then just goes da 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 da. So you've got this just basic one chord happening. It allows a sound like this to sort of do its thing because it's clear, you can hear it. It goes for four bars and then it stops. He mutes it. And this is Bruce's ability to orchestrate and then Eddie's solo comes in. So you don't want a 16th note sound interfering with Eddie's solo, so he clears for it, but it sets the tone of a little bit of tension and energy before the guitar solo happens. And this is the hidden sound. And if you listen carefully, you can definitely hear it in the song. And it makes a difference because throughout Thriller, there are a lot of these little hidden gems that sort of pop in and then pop out. And I want to make a point of Bruce because he was a very unique mixer, and I remember he had this plexiglass like a uh, music stand, and he, he laid out look, what looked like score paper, like orchestral score paper, with staves on it, but instead of notes, he would be writing information about tracks, and it was the way he was orchestrating, so he could visually see the song, and he knew where things were coming in and where things were going out, so when he would do his mixes, and they were live mixes, I don't know about how much automation there was, he would follow his score and know when to bring these types of things out. And it, it's, it's the difference maker. So really want to keep that in mind when you're putting your song together and you, you might stripe a couple sounds from top to bottom. But the difference maker is finding the right spots where they can really stand out and then when you pull them back out so that something new could come in and you make space and the song can breathe in that way. Think about the concept of this sound. It may, some, to some of you it may seem a little more complex. But it, it's simple in its very nature, 
that you want to get something that's moving in 16th notes. It's just on one note, so it's just like a one note sequencer. And what makes it kind of interesting is that it gets brighter randomly. So there's movement, there's like bubbling in the sound. It allows the, the song to kind of pulse along. And by using the sample and hold generator in time with the track, I can get the filter to have some interest to it, like some movement. Without it, it would sound like this. Kind of plain, but adding it, to me, brings it to life. So it's all these little things. So you can experiment this. I'm sure you can do this with VSTs. It's easy to sync them with your track. You don't even have to go through all this mess and you can get it at 16th notes or eighth notes. And then just add some life to it by modulating the filter a little bit, play around with your initial cutoff frequency, add resonance, uh, play around with your, your ADSR attack modulation amount because that's gonna make a difference and then how much random you want there. So that's the breakdown of the hidden sound in Beat It, what I call the machine gun synth sound. <laughs>